You may be seated. Hallelujah. You all may be seated. Greetings to all that have joined us on this Khatve Imat. So Imat Khatve simply implies the truth of Torah that Yoshua HaMashiach is revealed in the most dynamic, profound way unto Yisrael that it becomes real. Hallelujah. I know that we are not singing in our regular procession because the Ark, they have just gotten home from a tremendous day's labor. I was not intending to have service on this evening, but there are those that have questions concerning uh, the Mo'adim, and we are rapidly approaching the Mo'ad, the Hag, the Haga, the time of celebration of what we call Turu'ach, Yam Turu'ach, the Feast of Trumpets. And there are those that have asked questions to understand uh, some of the intricates of the Mo'adim, why is it important the validation of that because we as others have come out of this unscrupulous religious society that denounce all of the important values of Almighty Yah. And there are those that struggle in their conscience as to the validity of this, what is the reason, the purpose behind it. And so I spoke to our Zakhin Yarabiyad this morning. I intended to speak to him yesterday and ask to let me teach on this, on this Khatzve Imat. You that have joined us and we will reiterate during the process of this teaching on Khatzve Imat. I am hoping that we can, as I said to one in California, our Ak Davis, and those that join us uh, in the live broadcast, it is still 4 p.m. in the evening there, and he is just getting off from work. So I said to him, I am hoping that we can crunch this video tonight and get it back up online for people like him in the mountain time zone, on the Pacific time zone, because it is somewhat early in those regions of the United States. But I do want to teach on the, the Mikra, the Mo'adem, the feast days, uh, the Hach, the celebration uh, of the knowledge of Yah as we come to the fullness of this knowledge. And when I utilize that statement, the fullness, uh, it is simply that when his truth uh, began to materialize or bring forth the fruit in our lives, uh, that when we hear the excellence of his Torah, we rejoice. That is what a hara is. It is a time of celebration. It is one of dancing and singing, rejoicing. It is one whereby we shub or we turn and twist. We become intoxicated or drunken in the ruach of Yah. And so we celebrate the greatness of our Abba, all he has done for Yisra'ah, as he brings us to these times that are celebrations unto him. What is the purpose of man? Why did Yah even make man? And yet he is in tune with man for this great fellowship of passion. It is bosom that he has for his nation Yisra'ah, and he has set aside days that are regulated uh, by the Chodesh, the moon, and the celestial bodies uh, in the heavens above. That we come to that time, uh, it is a time of watching to make sure that we are observing. There is observation. So we will know the time of the seasons, uh, the appointed time of the season uh, of the days of Yah's celebration, because these are mikron, these are days of memorial. Not only should they be uh, imprinted in our minds, but they should be written down on paper that we know 
and we watch for the season and the time. I want to say to you, to you that have joined us, we have two beautiful booklets. I don't know if you can see them. One is entitled, The Importance of Yahweh's Feast Days, His, His Appointed Times and Seasons, and also Yahweh's Covenant Feast Days. If you join us on the live broadcast, visual or audio, you can write, you can download these booklets, uh, and they will begin to open the window of your understanding, uh, whereby the simple truth of Yah, it becomes more uh, practical and easy to assess in your life, because people tend to, uh, uh, they tend to, to, to become baffled when we talk about the more dim of Yah. And so I wanted to start early tonight because... Uh, it's going to take me at least an hour and a half or two hours to finish this or until nine. It's important because there are some detailed things that I want to point out on this uh, teaching tonight, Israel, that I do believe that it is vital to our growth uh, and our understanding what Yah has done. What a great honor that one invites you uh, to their gathering, to their feast. And he is the one that created us and so he has caused that to be written in the chronicles uh, of his shefa the book uh, so that we are constantly reminded uh, he has set the celestial bodies in order especially uh, the Chodesh the moon uh, so that it reminds us constantly uh, of this great time and season uh, that Yah has ordained for an elect special people yeah. that he has invited them to a wonderful feast yeah. that we can gather. Yeah. I want to first of all, you that are listening to us on the live stream, as we are approaching what we would call the Feast of Shufa or Turuach, the sounding of the ram's horn, the blowing of the sound or the shouts for preparation. That is what Jufa is for or the Ru'ach. It is the blowing of the shofar that we here in the Teshua community. Now there are groups of individuals that will begin the counting of the days on what they call the dark side of the moon. We do have a teaching for you that have joined us. Uh, the teaching is entitled, How to Determine the Feast Days of Almighty Yahweh. I illustrate with posters. I show you the detailed uh, process of determining the feast days. Uh, and one thing that is vitally important uh, is the definitive of words. And there is where people miss out on understanding uh, the writing uh, of the Torah. You want to examine that? We have been playing another message on the live broadcast uh, concerning the feast days that Yah declares uh, that these are my feast days. He shows the possession. He is possessive of his feast days. Uh, he doesn't want us to give attention to nothing else but Him. That's why it is a Shabbaton. It is a Shabbaton. It is a time of rest. It is a time of restoring. It is a time of nurturing, of revival. It is a time to be refreshed in the presence of our Abba through the power of the testimony of His Hamashiach, Yoshua Hamashiach. So we will begin here in Teshua with a service of dancing and singing on September the 17th at evening. Now there are those that will begin on Sunday the 16th because they recognize or they identify with what they call the dark side when there is no visibility uh, of the Chodash at all. 
And this is where the calculation, whereby the miscalculation and the interpretation of the time and the season, the appropriate time, has been construed by many. I say to you that are listening, you that will listen to this broadcast, that if you will listen to the teaching that I taught, it is how to determine the more of them the feast days of Almighty Yah. And I show us through the writings of the book of Sharach, of the book of Hanach, and even with illustrations as to how, and even what Zaiweed's meant when he spoke in Sahelium concerning uh, the sighting or the Chodash or the moon as he prepared for the season and the time of Almighty Yahweh. It is vitally important that we understand that. That's why it is important that we recognize the sighting, the slither, that little small slither of the moon. And we as a nation, we must be watchful for that Yisraya. We must be cognizant conscientious conscience of that uh, that we will keep things precisely uh, like your commands us uh, is any one of these myths back behind me are they difficult to understand not one of them neither any of the instructions of almighty yahweh we will begin in the month of tishri september when he begins um, the sighting of the moon, uh, and from all indications, it will be on the, the 16th. And that will prepare us for the eve uh, of uh, the 17th, which will introduce the first day of Yah. He commands us when to observe, when to Shema, to keep the feast day or his Mo'at. Uh, his mikra, a time, a celebration, a time to acknowledge him at a time to offer the offerings of Doda unto our Abba. That is the time that we will celebrate from Monday evening sundown until Tuesday evening sundown. How is that principle applied to the Mo'adim? Well, we will, uh, we will fetter through this teaching tonight, and you will come to a conclusion. I want to begin Yisraya in the book of uh, Weyira, concerning um, the command of Yah to keep his Mo'ad. And this teaching tonight will be not only on the Ru'ach, but it will be on Chempoah, or the Feast of Atonement, the Feast of Trumpets, and the Feast of uh, Atonement. I want to bring out the vital details of the Feast. Uh, it is simple to understand. We don't have to try to rationalize with this. We simply need to hear and uh, to obey what Yah commands us to do. And once we began to do that, then we can begin to walk in the liberties of Arabah with great excitement, with a great fervor, what he has commanded unto us to do Yisraya. This, as we come to this Turu'ach, this time of singing, rejoicing, the time of the alarm, of the signal, and it's one thing that Yah does any time that the shofar blows. It is always a time that we as a nation, uh, we must draw our attention uh, unto the sounding of the turuach or the sounding uh, of the shofar. We must. It is a time of a signal, a warning, uh, a time for us to rejoice, a time of judgment, uh, a time of correction. Uh, and that is what it implies. But I want to begin here in the book of Yahira, Leviticus 23. This is the command of Yah. As Yah commands, as he instructs uh, his messenger Moshe as uh, to what must be done. It is not something of any difficulties. Leviticus 23, 23. There is no kind of a performance we must perform or, or any kind of uh, assessments must be associated with this. Uh, it is simple. 
Let us read here in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 23. It says that Yah spoke or he zebah. He spoke or declared. He conversed with Moshe by command. He spoke. And in the midst of that debar, that was, uh, it, it was a warning or in the instance of a threatening. He says, uh, hear what I says, say unto you, Moshe. And Yah spoke unto Moshe, uh, saying, or Amah, what was in his mind, what he was thinking. Not what Moshe was thinking. Uh, this is from the mind of Yah. That is what Oma is. It is what one thinks uh, in one's own conscience. Uh, and then they speak that. So this did not come from the thought process of Moshe. This is Yah speaking unto his servant. Uh, and this is what he said. He says, I want you to speak unto the Bain, the children uh, of Yisrael. And this is what I want you to say. I want you to utter this. Uh, he tells him precisely he says in the seventh chodash in the seventh month when the month began when one knows that there is a new moon when the month begins he says i want it on the ikhat on the first day of the month on the chodash he says shall you have a shabbat a shabbaton it shall be a Memorial or a zikron, it shall be a reminder, it shall be written in our minds, in our bosom, in our thoughts, and it also must be written in a book. He says, I want you on this day to have a memorial, and I want it to be a turuach, a blowing of the shofar. He says, I want it to be a kodash, a kodash convocation or a mikra, a calling together of Yisrael. That is what the sound of the shofar is. It is the calling together of the assembly, assembly to assemble in a place that they may hear. This is not the instructions of Moshe. This is the instructions of Almighty Yahweh. He said it must be a Shabbaton, a time of rest, a time to desist from any kind of labor, any kind of sensual fulfillment uh, that you give your mind, your thought, and your love unto me. You don't need all of the other outside uh, things uh, to interact within this day of Shabbaton. That's all it is. It is a time of rest. It is a Shabbaton, whereby Yisrael assemble in the presence of Yah to hear the warnings, to hear the commands, to hear the instructions of Almighty Yahweh. He gives vital instructions in verse 25. He says, you shall do no abuda, no work at all, no work of any kind. No work that is religious, political, no work that is physical. He said there shall be no abu da, no servile labor at all. You should not work your oxen, your eyes, or any of your animals. That should be no work. He uses the words no, no, absolutely not at all. It cannot be altered. He said, there shall be no servile work therein. But he commands us that we as a nation of people, we shall bring a mincha, a gift, an offering. The gift of toda, the gift of appreciation, a mincha, a gift of gladness. That we shall bring this kind of offering unto Almighty Yahweh. A gift of appreciation, a gift of glad tidings, a gift of shimcha, a gift of rejoicing in the presence of our Abba. We shall bring a gift, this oblation, this tribute unto Yah. It shall be made by the ish of Yah, the fire. 
And we having this living Torah in our bosom, as Yeremiah said, he said, the power of this inferno that's in me, it is like a raging fire, oh, shut up in my bones. He set aside times and seasons for us to bring an oblation to him, to show him how much we appreciate him for our life and strength to be alive, to be walking, to be able to engage with him to, through our tefillah, our prayer offering, and to interact with him. Believe me, Yisrael, we did not come through some metamorphosis of some kind of evolution uh, through some parasite. We came through the power of the image of the mind of the Most High, yeah, the Creator of all things, Yisrael. And he has introduced days, times, and seasons, not only for us to show our appreciation to him, but him to show us how much he appreciates us and how we are his beloved. What a great blessing that is, Yisrael. The simplicity of this Shabbaton, he says, do not do any abudza, no labor. Don't labor for your political system, for your, quote, religious, unquote, rights. We simply bring before Yah this offering uh, whereby it has been generated the growth uh, to this time and season at Pesach. As we come through Sha'ud. And then now to this time that we may bring an offering uh, of the fire of delight in our bosom. Uh, we bring that unto Yah with our hands raised. Uh, and the clapping, uh, as Zoking Biramin says, the clapping of our hands, the moving of our feet. Uh, and our rejoicing before Him in great delight. Uh, what a great privilege that is. Uh, he did not add any adamants to that that will make it difficult. Uh, he did not tell us that we must bring tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, he made it so simple, Yisrael, that it is not a burden on us. It is not taxing on us. Uh, it is not difficult on us at all. Uh, you hear the theology that, well, quote, we live by what they call, quote, grace, unquote, uh, and not by... The works. Well, when you see the word, when Yah says do or asa, asa, a w hyphen s a w asa, it implies that uh, we allow the Torah to fashion us, to form us, to form our minds, to form our thinking, uh, to form our actions, to form our ways. Uh, can I ask you, uh, is not that uh, an act? If one does that, that's a physical labor of act. So it is with everything in the book. We must fashion ourselves accordingly. And Yah brings us to the seventh month of the season. We are on the threshold of the season and time of the great gathering of all of our labor. That he gives us eight days. Uh, the last great day of Chadol Yamna. That we can rejoice, our barns are full, uh, our minds are refreshed in the lawfulness of his Torah, and we have strength for the battle uh, that is set ahead. So we pray that our flight or our fight be not in the winter time as we approach that season uh, after Sukkoth. May I proceed? He tells us here in the book of Shemoth, in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 19. And this is when the people, when Yah commands Moshe, as he directs the people to prepare for the hearing of the Torah, the laws of Yah. And also, whereby Yah will present himself unto them. That's why this Moad, it is vital like all of them. And I will show you the reason why here in the book of Shemoth, in the book of Genesis chapter 19 and verse 10, verse 9, I want to begin. It says in Exodus 19, 9, Exodus 
99. And Yah said unto Moshe, He says, I want you to prepare yourself because I come or I bow. I enter in. I present myself. He said, I come to you in a thick cloud. And that reason that the people may shemach, they may hear. Shemach is to have power to hear, to understand, and to obey Yisra'ya. That the people may hear, they may shemach, and in the process of hearing, you become attentive. It is of great value. It is of great interest to you. So he spoke to Moshe and said uh, that the people may hear, they may listen uh, when I speak with you. Uh, and he says that they may all uh, amen. There are three components of that verb. Uh, it is one of faithfulness, uh, one of faithfulness and confidence, uh, and one that is of assurance that you, uh, that you, uh, you acknowledge that Yah has spoken. That's why the old ones in the assembly would say, I understand the expression, but amen, is that this word is faithful. It has been confirmed by my agreement with it. It gives me confidence in Almighty Yah, and we know that it is truth. So you speak unto the people of Yisra'ya. So when I speak to you and believe, when I speak to you, and believe that they may omen, he said, they may believe you, Moshe, forever. I will come in a thick cloud. I want you to present yourself before me. I want the people to be able to hear me utter my voice or oma to speak, to utter, to confer with you for one reason, that they may omen. They may believe you, olam Viat forever for antiquity without ceasing for eternity. Do we believe the speech of Moshe in this book? So that's why Yah spoke to him in the presence of all Yisraya that they will have confidence in the words that Moshe spoke. That these words were faithful and they will confirm that in their hearts because they know or they knew that it was of the truth, the imat. He said that they may believe you forever. And Moshe, he told the words of the people uh, to Yah. He spoke what Yah said unto him. And Yah said to Moshe, go to the people. He says, and I want you to kadash. I want you to consecrate, set them apart, sanctify them. I want them to be kadash. He said, I want it to be done this yom, this day, uh, and on uh, tomorrow. He said, and let them uh, kabash. Zokin Yerabiyah brought out the teaching of the kabash, or the fuller. He said, I want them to wash themselves. Not just any washing, uh, but that of a fuller. That our minds are cleansed, our hearts are, th th there is no uh, encroachment or reproach to Yah because we have given sin a season to reason in our minds uh, and then we carry out those things that are opposition unto the Most High. So I want you to kabash as a fuller, and when a fuller, as we were taught, when he finished the garment, there is no spot in it, is it? So not just wash them, not them just playing in water like we as children have done when we were commanded by our parents to bathe. He said, but I want you. To wash them as we are washed in the dam, the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. And when we are washed in that blood, it doesn't leave any traces of sin. You cannot find sin at all, Yisra'ya. I want you to kabash them, their clothing. We must put on the sadiq garment, the garment of righteousness, the garment of praise. That's a beautiful garment. We must put on the garments of Yah Yisra'ya, especially at the season, His 
Chodash is time of his Mo'adim. He said, make sure that they're clothing, they're clothed in the garment of Sadiqa. That they have on the righteous breastplate. Their feet are shot. The helmet, the assurance of your sure, the insignant or the oath of every man's head. That that authority rests upon their head. And they gather in my behat. He says that I want you to be ready the third day. For the third day Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sunni'i. Sunni'i or Sunni'i. He said, and you shall set Gabal, you shall. He commands Moshe. In the reading of the Moet of Yah, did he not set bounds for us or Gabal? No servile labor, no work. Did he not set the bounds? He commands Moshe that you should set bounds for the people round about. He says, I want you to say to them, take heed. I want you to shema. I want you to take heed, to govern yourself, to inspect yourself, to do an introspective uh, purging of one's mind. He said, take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself that you go not up into the place that I've commanded you not to go. He commands us that there, this season you don't work. No Abuddha, you don't labor, you don't perform your political uh, labor, your religious. You don't go out witnessing on the streets or anything like that. Uh, that's what he commanded them. It is a Shabbaton. It is a Shabbaton. He said, I don't want you to even touch the borders of it. We should not touch the unclean things of the world. Touch not. Taste not. Don't even uh, lay our hands on those things that are not approved by Almighty Yah. We should not do that, Yisrael. He said, if they even touch the borders thereof, whosoever touch the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall be muth. They shall die prematurely, they shall not grow, they shall not reach the expected age that was promised unto them. We cannot touch the Torah of Yah out of a mind that is carnal. To be carnally minded is enmity, it is a hatred. There is sane for the Torah. The carnal mind cannot comprehend. The things of the Torah because they are spiritually discerned, Yisra'ya. So we don't touch the ways of Yah with a natural carnal mind. Whosoever does that, they shall die prematurely because they have neglected. And the word muth, it implies that we die prematurely because we have neglected the wise counsel of the Torah. We began to pine away spiritually, mentally, physically. We began to lose those applications that bring strength to our loins. Because our minds to be refreshed and alive. That we are constantly reconstituted unto the Most High Yisrael. He said they shall die if they touch those things that they should not touch. Verse 13, there shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not hide. It shall not have the breath of life. It shall not even uh, uh, as vegetation uh, flow with the breath of Yah's nostrils uh, as the wind blow. There shall be no life, it shall die. He said, it shall not live. He says, in the next uh, application here, he said, when the ram's horn of the shofar sounds to ruach, always a time of, and a season of warning, Rejoicing and dancing, expectation, judgment. 
He says, when the ram's horn, and that is the shofar. That is the shofar. It is the tur, teruach. It is a ruach, which implies the breath of life, and the flow of the breath of Yah flows. And that is what teruach is. That is what the sounding of the shofar is. It is to revive us. It is to make us alive. It is to cause us to, to be ready for the breath of Yah's word to flow down into the depths of our shat, our bosom. That's what it's for, Yisraya. He says, now, Yah is going to pay a visitation. He says to us, to Ruach, I visit. Two or three gathered. This is a special gathering for me. Yeah. It is the Shabbaton, but it is one that I have appointed for my season, my, uh, my Mu'adim. It is the Mikra. It is a time of celebration. So the sounding of the ram's horn, of the shofar, he said, I want it to sound long. They shall come up to the mount, to the hair. So when Yah sounds the shofar for this teruach, or this yam teruach, it is for us to come closer to the promises of Yah. We allow our hearts to be filtered uh, by the Ruach HaKodesh uh, and to extricate, take out, destroy everything uh, that opposes Yah Yisrael. It is the time that we refine ourselves, uh, that we gather in from the great harvest of Yah and we bring in. He brought me over this. He brought me through this. So you don't set silence so sukkah. It's a time whereby all of the things, there's a culmination of all the riches of Yah and the blessings of Yah that as the old ones say, you cannot hold it back. As I we said, if I had a 10,000 tongues for what he has done, Yisrael, it is the sounding of the shofar. It is the sounding of the ram's horn that, uh, that implies or introduces uh, the, the ruach, the ruach, the spirit, the breath, and the life of Yah. It is a command unto Yah. And so the application of his gathering, this was a time of gathering for Yisrael, was it not? In the wilderness, in the mitzvah. And so it is, so the more of them, I can show you from the beginning, uh, even when Yah speaks, let me read this, I will show you. From the beginning uh, that Yah had it all, the more of them, uh, the feast days were here before we were ever thought of. Uh, I will show you that. Turn to Genesis, Bereshit. It's when we began to understand the definitives of words and understand the Bereshit, chapter 1, verse 14. And Yah said, let there be ma'or. He did not just say, let there be or, but let there be ma'or. He said, I want there to be brightness and cheerfulness. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. Yah says, let there be or nothing, I bestow that there be ma'or. That there be cheerfulness and brightness. When you walk out Yisraya and you see the celestial bodies, doesn't it change one's countenance? It's a beautiful thing to look at the rising of the sun. It's a beautiful thing to walk out and see, uh, a, a, see the fullness of the moon. And the celestial bodies, you can see what we call the big dipper, the little dipper. The brightness, you see a cheerfulness there. So Yah implies, let there be a ma'or, ma'or, a cheerfulness, a brightness, uh, because I have expressed this, this is me. Uh, he says, in the expanse of the heavens, or Hashem he said to divide, to separate day from night, and let them be for an uth, a sign, a marking. And this is the catalyst. Uh, the next word he says, uh, and seasons or mo'at. That is what the word season mo'at. We're in the mo'at. And the mo'at. And the mo'adim. Plural. 
And let it be for a season or the mo'ad, the appointed time, the appointed place. The mo'ad implies that there's an appointed time, there's an appointed season for the appointed assembly, in the appointed place, for the appointed gathering. That's what he made the celestial bodies for. He made everything for man's power. He made everything for the, for the beautification of man to amplify him above even the fallen, I will call them angels, the Melikim that left their first estate, Israel. And he said, there will be seasons that I will come down and I will speak to you. I will sing with you. I will eat with you. I will drink with you. I will dine with you. And these are the Mo'ats of Yah, and we are upon one. And it should be a time of great rejoicing. We should haga. It is a haga. Not just a hag, but a haga. A time of dancing and singing and celebration. A time of euphoric. There are little ones that their minds, it will be written in their minds that they will understand the value and the importance of the seasons. The Mo'ed of Yah and their conscience of the Chodash, the moon, because this is an oath or a sign to determine when we began, when we began to, uh, 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 to set things in order for the season that is ahead of us. And once we began to understand it, it is so beautiful, Yisrael. It is not something that you don't want to do is something that you want to do. You look forward to it. Uh, it is of great substance, of great riches, uh, and great blessings to know that He that has made us, He has set aside days that we ought not to be confused as to when the time and the season. He sat in the expanse of Hashem Am, the Mach'or, the brightness of His beauty. The brightness of his honor, the excellence of his power and ability, that there will no, be no doubt among Yisra'ya as to when yeah. the appointed time and the season yeah. of Yah's days are. That we will be, we will not be in any doubt at all, Yisra'ya. Yeah. He did that. So before we were ever created, he created those things to make sure that we were in line and in tune with him, and then that we will have no excuse. At all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, the Torah continues here in the book of Shemoth. Uh, turn back to Shemoth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in Shemoth 19, uh, and I do believe I stopped in what, at what verse? Let me proceed in Exodus 19 and verse 16. It says, and it came to pass... No, and verse 14, verse 14, ex Exodus 19, 14. It says in the verse 19, it says that when the voice, the call of the shofar, when it sounds that long, the shofar sounded long, and wax, it grew louder, Kara, kara, louder and louder. Moshe spoke, and only then Yah answered him by his voice. Yah answered him. And so this is the season that as we blow the shofar, honestly, I wanted to find some for all the little children, some kind of little horn or something that they could blow why because i want everything about the moadim the shabbat to be exciting for our little ones that it become innate a part of them the world does it it is a sad shame that we as a nation we just perform things and it doesn't mean anything to us it's sad There is no excitement for Yah. We don't think of how we can as a nation, how to 
amplify. It says that the shofar, it blew. And the sound became greater and greater and stronger and stronger. That should be our attitude. That's how we should approach his mo'ed because he said, this is for me. He's a great king. There is no other king that is great but Yah. And what do we bring a king? A gift that is not even worth the king's attention. We give him all. Because he's granted unto us all. Yoshua HaMashiach and the beauty of his Mo'ad. His Mo'adem, the feast days of Almighty Yah. Look at the instruction he gives us here in the book of Leviticus. Concerning the year of Jubilee. And the word Jubilee in its, its Hebraic expression. Can I tell you what it is? It is Teruach. It is the sounding. Teruach. Teruach. That has its roots, the word Teruach has its roots in the word ruach, ruach, the life, the breath, the shout, the rising of the sound. That's what the ruach hachodesh does. And it has its roots in that, Yisraya. It has one of the, one of the most valuable components of ruach. Is a, it is a blast, loud sound of shem, shem, joy. That's what it is. So the year of Jubilee is the time of great celebration. It is the time of dancing and drinking the yayin. Not this trash you buy that uh, you buy from the stores, but the wine that is pressed from the grapes of the sweetness of Yah. So he gives us an account here in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25 and verse 8. And this is concerning the year of Jubilee, uh, that there are certain activities, especially one that is oppression, uh, it is forbidden. Uh, it is the time of liberation. That is what the Ruach is. It is the time that we have labored intensely. We have, uh, we have sown the seed. And look at the seed messages uh, we, have, we have been taught here. Look at how Zachin Yaramaya, look at Zachin Birmi, look at Akshimri and others. You know, look at those specifics, Zachin Yaramaya, that has been ingrained in him to continue a continuation on one Pacific so that we may get knowledge of that matter. It may become a part of our psyche and our spiritual identity, and we allow that zira, the seed, uh, to impregnate us and began to produce the power of confidence uh, in the Torah of Yah. Yeah. He instructs Yisraeliah here in uh, Leviticus 25 verse 8. He tells us the time of the season. Look how precise Yah is. He says, and you shall number seven Shabbats, of years to you, you must keep account of the time and the seasons of Yah. You must number seven, seven times seven years, and in the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you forty and nine or forty and nine years. Look at what Yah says now. Look how precise he is. He said, Then shall you cause. In that year, he says, I want you to cause the shofar of uh, Teruach or Jubilee. Uh, that's it. That is what Teruach is. It is the time that Yah speaks to his nation. He spoke is the time that he gathers and he waits. Uh, he embraces them. Uh, oh, I know he walks with us every day, but he brings us collectively. Uh, and when those travel to Yerushalayim, uh, they were there for Teruach. Uh, they were there for Kempura because they knew that the, that the very climactic time of Sukkoth, uh, it was upon them. And what a great time. 
So they had laid back the grain. They had laid back the shekels. They had made sure the fields and the gardens were right. They had pasture for the cattle and their goats and sheep to graze. They knew their master's crib and they were returned back. They did not wander off. They were sufficient for them to go out and to come back to that appointed place. And so they would travel unto Yerushalayim, the city of Shalom, where the gates of Yah's kingdom were there. And they were entering with great rejoicing with gifts uh, and with the beasts of burden laden down. Uh, this is a generation that will not put back one nickel for Yah to, to gather with his nation, his people. He gives us instructions how we number. And then he tells us in verse 9, Leviticus 25, 9. Then shall you cause the shofar of Teruach Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. What is that? It is the time of Yom Kippur. Kippurim. He says in the Yom Kippurim. Shall you make the shofar sound throughout all the land. Now we know that this shofar that's blown in here of the shofar that we blow, it doesn't sound throughout all the land. But he's talking about the erech, the land. We are the earthly vessels of Yah. Are we not? And so we should hear the sound of his voice, his thunder, his skull, as he speaks to us. We should hear that, Yisra'ya. It's a time of the Ruach Jubilee. It is a time of great celebration, a time of dancing, a time of rejoicing and refreshing ourselves in Yah from all of our labor in that year. Verse 10, he says, And you shall kadash the 50th year and proclaim. Look what we shall proclaim now. He said, You shall proclaim liberty of the Ur. There shall be a liberty for the people. There shall be now the, the, the Ur of Yah. It is not as though that what we think liberty is. There shall be a spontaneous overflow of the rejoicing of Yah. Where the Ruach of Yah is among Israel, Yah, there's liberty. You will know not because you say you're free. There is this spontaneity. There is this overflow. When there is no overflow of the spontaneity in us, uh, there is no liberty. And to ruach, the sounding of the shofar, this gathering, uh, it is the time that we liberate ourselves from who? Our flesh. That we prepare for the tenth day that we may, uh, we may celebrate the kippurah uh, or, the, or the time of afflicting ourselves before Yah. It is a time of freedom from you. Freedom from the nature of sin. And when we celebrate these times, it is, uh, it is to remind us that we can walk this way every day in the power of the testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach. He said, you must de declare liberty throughout all the land. And all the inhabitants thereof, it shall be a teruach. It shall be a jubilee. It shall be a sounding of the shofar. It shall be a teruach. To you, and you shall return every man to his possession, and you shall return every man to his family. You will not lay hold on to anyone. You will not have any evit or any those that are under the uh, under the servitude unto you in any form of slavery or any kind of bondage. They're free. Those that are indebted to you, they are free. Those that owe you, they're free from that debt. Because there is an overflow, there is a diroa, diroa, there's a diroa, there's a spontaneity in the land, there's a rejoicing because of the sound of the shofar, it is a turuach, it is an outpour of the ruach of Yahya, he has approached us. And let us not be a reproach unto him, but let us approach him, let us kira, come close to him. And these are special days for him that we can get close to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he doesn't want anything on our mind but him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11. 
He says, A teruach or a jubilee shall be in the 50th year to you. He said, You shall not sow, neither reap that which grows of itself in it, nor gather the grapes of the vineyard or of your vine undress. In essence, he says, I don't want you to sow whatever come, let it fall to the earth, because I'm the one that has brought forth plenty, plentiness for you. I want you to know that I am the supplier. I am the one that brings forth the abundance and the riches unto you, Yisraya. He said, let it fall. Let it replenish the earth. Let it go back unto the earth, Yisraya. I am the one that grants unto you the great abundance that you are enjoying. And I want you to have a, I want you to have a, a, sponta- a, a, a spontaneity, a, a spontaneous overflow of rejoicing. As you see that which grows of itself uh, and that which falls to the ground, uh, you know that Yah has been the one. He has sown, uh, yet He has sent the rain, He has sent the water, and yet He has caused you to reap abundantly, Yisraya. One may plow our bosom with the Torah of Yah. One may come and drop the zira, the seed in there. But Yah is the one that sent the living power through the Ruach HaKadash uh, of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. He is the one that waters Yisrael. And so he brings us to these great gatherings uh, that all hell rage against us. Uh, and he can say, look at my tree. Look at my tree of life. Look at the vines of my vineyard. Uh, come on, Yisrael. We must, uh, we must begin to embrace all that he commands us to do and see the vitality and the vitalness of it. We got to get away from ourselves. Hallelujah. Verse 12. For it is the Teruach, the Jubilee. It shall be Kadesh, a Kodesh. It shall be set apart for you. And that's what Teruach is. It should be Kodesh. It should be set apart for you. You shall eat the increase thereof. Out of the field. Yah said I've increased you. He increased Yisrael from year to year. Rap. To make us grow. We have to grow spiritually. We have to ought to mature. Spiritually, mentally, physically. Wiser. With understanding that, that that's the way it should be. Should not, should not it be that way? We're somewhat pathic. If, we, if I'm thinking the way I did last year, I'm pathic. If my attitude is the same as it was six months ago, I'm pathic a month ago. If I cannot see the pruning of his Torah, the cutting of this sharp sword, this powerful word, this powerful revelation of Yahshua, if I don't see that in my life being refined, there's something, I, you, you know, this is not the place for me. If, if, if truth is not going forth, we should see exponentially growth and maturity, transformation in our lives. And so we come to the season, then there's a spon- spontaneousness of or spontaneity of offering to Yah, and it's done with a great delight. I have never had in all of my life been pressed to praise Yah. I've always loved doing it. No one had to tell me. I'm, there has never been any situations in my life to make me morbid before the presence of Yah. I've always recognized this truth when the messenger speak, made no different to Omain because it's faithful, it's truth, it is confirmed. Hallelujah. I want to proceed here. In verse 13. He says, in the year of this, he declares it, Yobel, or the ram's horn, to Ruach, the same. In the year of this jubilee of the shofar, you shall return every man to his possession. No man owes any man anything. You return every man to his possession, to his home. If any ark is indebted to you, you relieve him of that. Any hold, any misforgivings, you forgive them of that. You search your heart and your mind and you intrigue them as a friend, a re'ach. 
that you are a watchman for them. That's what a friend does, Yisrael. Turuach is a time of warning, it's a season of the blowing of the shofar that we may be prepared, Yisrael. Shaul gives us a tremendous revelation here as he writes unto Corinthia, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42. As he gives us an understanding of this indication or the blowing of the shofar and what shall happen. This is a time that when we hear the shofar, I believe that I need to practice mine a little more. My isha says to me, uh, do you not think you need to practice on the shofar? I said, just blow it. But I, I, I want to, on this occasion, if Yah grants me to find some little small ones for all the little children, just a few, then I will find some that they all will have a little shofar and blow on their little horn. How about that? Yeah. You adults don't take great delight in that. That's why Yahshua set a little one in the midst of them and said, unless you become like one of these little ones. Hallelujah. Shaul speaks unto us that there shall be a time of a shofar blast. It shall be a teruach, a day ayon teruach. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. I want to read a few verses here. He tells us what shall transpire as I read to us in Exodus when Yah commanded Yisrael to come and to meet him. He says, there's a day that's coming. He said, it's going to be in a moment in the twinkling of an eye in an eye, he says, at the last shofar, at the last teruach, yam teruach, there's going to be lies. Just like it was the first, there's going to be a lies. There's going to be a lies shofar. He said, at the last shofar, he said, for the shofar shall sound, and then those that have died in Yah and Yahshua, they shall rise incorruptible. As Yah commanded Moshe, I want you to kadash, set the people apart. Make them wash the filth of their garment. He said, and we shall be changed at the last trump. At the last Yom Teruach, we shall be changed. He said, for this corruptible must, this old body, we are corrupt, Yisraya. It must put on incorruption uh, in this mortality, this fleshly nature, must operate in the spiritual Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal, this fleshly desire, shall have put on the conscience and the mind of Yah Yahshua, this immortality, that nothing defies the mind of Yah, nothing destroys the mind of Yah, nothing can kill the mind of Yah. That's why we must let the same mind that was in Yahshua HaMashiach, it must be in us, Yisraeah. Our minds are corrupt, they're evil, they're sadistic. We must have that mind, because that is the mind that pleases Yah in all things, everything. He said, when that has happened, uh, it shall be brought to pass the saying that is Hataba Maveth, death, is swallowed up in Teshua, in the victory, in the victory of the Dabarim, of the Torah writings of the word of Almighty Yah. It's not you're sure the living, the Ra of Yah. Then all things are brought unto the captivity of the Torah of Almighty Yah. No weapon can, uh, can uh, dismantle, destroy the very power of that testimony. If it's real in us. If it's real. And that's why the gathering of his more uh, dim, this particular one as we come near the close of his season, of his feast days, uh, it is vital. It is the warning of the blowing of the shofar, and then it is a time, uh, ten days later, to afflict ourselves, to anna, to cause ourselves to be afflicted. 
that we do not cater or give in to the rituals of our flesh as we do. It cries for this, we pamper it. It cries for that, we pamper it. It wants that, we grant it to it. And then in that process, establishing that Torah, that we can do it that day, we can do it consistently with persistence every day afterwards. That we will become complete in Yeshua, Hamashiach, Yisrael. And that is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blowing of the shofar, there's an indication, that's why the season, that we must always be cognizant conscience conscientience of what is transpiring is because the warnings of yah he always uh, caused the shofar or the khara the loudness of the voice to speak unto Yisrael. Yeah. so what is the season preparing us for just like the nobi yuel speaks to us in the book of yuel Joel, chapter 2 Joel chapter 2. Greetings to you that have joined us, you that have may come online late. Maybe difficulties, you on the West Coast, like our Ak Charles Davis and those that gather with him. We're teaching this teaching tonight on the feast days or the Moads, uh, the Ruach and Kempura. I'm going to do it all tonight. But you that have questions, you don't understand certain aspects of the feast days we have material here to assist you but we do want to offer this booklet it is entitled the importance of yahweh's feast days and also this booklet yahweh's covenant feast days you can download them you're on the website you can download them you can write we will send this out to you free of charge we charge for no material but you can assist us in offsetting the cost of shipping. But they're free for you. And they will help you as you pursue this, not truth, but just understanding. It has been so complicated by the theology of man. It has been so complicated, interwoven with man's concepts, his philosophy, his theology. And so it's difficult for people to understand. And so he calls a man of simple means, simple understanding, to teach it in a way that even the wayfaring of all men can understand. What is the simplicity of this truth? We just do what he commands us. That's it. You don't have to interject. You do not have to deduct. You do not have to transfer or confer your own mind, transfer from the book. You just believe. He that believes on me, like the Torah says, uh, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. All you got to do is botak, 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 believe with confidence, with assurance, uh, trusting in what the book says. We got to confer with ourselves. We got to refer to our own intellectual uh, our knowledge we perceive we have. And it corrupts us. Hallelujah. The reason, the purpose to react, uh, we afflict ourselves. Uh, because Sukkoth is like the gathering of Yisrael in the kingdom. Uh, when the labor is over. over. For Yah has gathered in the uh, from the earth, the earth uh, his fruit and they are brought into his kingdom all of this uh, has representation of what shall be and is to be uh, in the fulfillment of all things when we are all changed that's what it's about Yisrael. may i proceed Joel speaks here concerning the mishpatim the judgment the correction the counsel of Yah. Joel chapter 2 verse 1. He tells us to tacha, to blow. To give a robust sound, an alarm. To blast, to blow with strength, with fervor. He says unto us, I want you to tacha. Blow, you the shofar. 
He tells us where to blow it. In Tizaun. In Tizaun. In Zion. Zion, the assembly, the elect, the bokhir, the call out, the special ones of Yah. He said, blow the shofar. So only Yisra'i Yah will hear the alarm or the sounding of the shofar to gather for teru'ach. Only Yisra'i Yah. He said, blow you the shofar in Tizayun. He says, and I want you to sound an alarm. And the word alarm is ruach. It is the ruach. It is the shofar. Sound an alarm in my chodesh hair, my mountain, my high place, my exceedingly high place. We even see where our short time he took your shoe into that high place of your did he not? Say, separate yourself, segregate yourself from the Torah of Yah. You know that he is not going to allow you to, to succumb. He will give his melakim charge over you. That at least at any time you dash your foot against the stone, they shall bear you up. That's why when we began to allow the word to process us, instead of we trying to process the word, uh, that we will truly be like that city that sits upon the head, the mountain of Almighty Yah. We will have the awe and the ma'or of Yah, the cheerfulness, the gladness, the rejoicing. And then it will not be hid under the corruption of flesh. It will emanate from us the great light and brightness. Hear the Torah of Yah. He said, Make the law in my Kodash mountain. He said, Let all the inhabitants of the land, I want them to ragaz, to tremble. I want them to, to tremble with fear and great agony. He said, for the day of Yah is come, for it is near at Yacht. It is at hand. This is what Turuach reminds us. The coming of our Hamashiach and the great day of our Abba. And if we cannot get excited about that, something is missing in our Ru'ach. If we don't labor in our physical being and our bodies to prepare ourselves for that day, spiritually and mentally, and even the king is coming to the house to make sure that the floors are swept and mopped and clean, something is wrong in your spirit. That he has invited you to a gathering. Come on, Yisra'ya. Something is wrong. I, I garner energy just from that. I do. Just to know that he is coming again. Blow the shofar. It must remind us he is coming. As it opened up the entrance of Yabo into Yisra'ya, he met them at a mountain, did he not? Did he not? And Yah speaks unto, the, unto us is to blow the shofar. <clears throat> In his Chadosh is called that mountain. And the high places where it may reach the very zenith, the pinnacle of our minds, Yisra'ya. He said, let the land tremble for the day of Yah is near in his hand. He tells us it's a day of Hoshech, of great agony and pain and suffering. It's a day of Afelah, uh, Afelah. It's a day of great gloomness. Whereby there shall be no light of the Torah. It's a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there has not been one like. There shall be a people that rise up, an anti hamashiach people that are against Yisra'ya, against the true lineage, the true zero, the seed of Yisra'ya, that Yah has raised them up. That's why we must sound the alarm, Yisra'ya. That's why we must gather, we must... Learn how to gather and appreciate one another. The world has taught us to disregard each other. Not to have a love for each other. Not even have a sense. Not even have a sensitivity to each other. That's sad. I don't ever want to be like that, y'all. I don't ever want to be like that, y'all. 
I don't ever want to be like that. In all of my wickedness, I wasn't like that. Much as we have opportunity, we do right. Sadiq, honest, by all men. But especially, especially, that should be a special, intriguing for Yisrael. As simple to obey. Another religious. Theology would tell you you don't have to do that. But that's what Yah says. He has elected you as my people. I am my nation. My son, my being. My calf, my little one. And you're special to him. So if you're special to him, he wants me to intrigue you in a special way. You have been elected by him, not me, by him. So if you are special to him, he wants me to intrigue you. By all men. But especially, Yisrael. It's the great, it's the strong people, there shall be none like that. This empire of hell, of Babel shall rise up against the nation of Yisrael, for Yah has set them in motion. He said, neither shall there be any more after it, even the years of many generations. There shall not be a people like that. What is he implying, Yisrael? He is simply saying that as we gather for Turuach, we must blow the sound. It must bring alive in us this Zacher, the warnings of Yah. And so when we understand the warnings of Yah and know that He means what He says, then we're free to dance and shout and sing. And the reason that we're not free to do that because uh, we, we are bound under our own iniquity. Because when we transgress against Yah, it's hard for us to love, to care for, to love Him above all, and to appreciate His Mo'at. I look forward to the feast days that Yah began after Sukkot. Planting for Pesach and Pesach. Shoutz, Shoutz. Always Sukkah. To make the place more beautiful. To enrich it. Hoping that there's plentifulness in the garden for the people to eat. No fee. No charge. So when they come, they see a place that's beautiful that's the way the kingdom is going to be hallelujah hallelujah can I speak from the breath of Hoshia the snobby of Yah as he speaks to us Yah always warns us with the Shufa. He speaks to us, Hoshia, that Yah is going to bring a tremendous agony upon us because of our piety, our arrogant, hubris, prideful, haughty ways, because we actually believe that we are above. I don't have to do that. I have to keep them more at. I don't have to intrigue my ach, my chot. I do them the way I want to. I don't want to do that. I want to lay down my life for Yisrael. And the Nobi speaks to us in Hoshea chapter 8 verse 1. Your says to this powerful messenger, this Nobi, this one of great utterance, substance, of tremendous Torah power. He tells him first of all uh, to set the shofar to your theft. He said, the enemy shall come as an, an eagle against the bed of Yah. 
And the reason why? Because we have, uh, we have transgressed. We have alienated. When one transgresses, uh, we have uh, a bad. Is a is a is an elimination and a destruction. But Yah says we have a uh, We have alienated ourselves uh, by our defiance of the Torah. Is keeping the Moed of Yah in the Torah? Sure is. Can we bring a gift to him uh, that is spotted? We cannot. Neither can our minds and our hearts be spotted with sin and ill. We have not confessed our sins and our wickedness. So he gives us a shout or blowing of the shofar that when atonement comes, we know that we have gotten things right. And then that day we afflict ourselves because of our own wickedness and what we have allowed to be birthed in our minds and in our bosom. That we have held this poison in us uh, and we have not matured, we have not brought forth any fruit. You can tell, listen, when one's character changes or the beauty of one changes, you can tell that. When one changes, you can tell that. You can tell when someone loses weight. Can I use that as an example? When they lose weight, do they look different? Should sure they look different. I don't care how much it is, you can you can tell, can you not? She looks more attractive. Oh, he looks, he looks so much better. Cannot you tell? So when one gains the spiritual weight of Yah, you can tell. They look strong and beautiful. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he said, because they have Abad, they have alienated. He said, my covenant, my Brit, my allegiance, my marriage, my alliance to them... And he said, and they have transgressed, trespassed, overridden, overthrown, Yah says, my possessive, my Yeshua, my Torah. He told the messenger to blow, to cause a Torah, set the shofar to your mouth to bring warning to Yisrael. And this is a season that warns us against who? The enemy? Against the enemy of our own hearts. Of our own minds. As the old proverb, you're your own worst enemy. And so that's what this is about, Yisra'ya. He said, Yisra'ya shel kara, they shall cry to me. Yeah? Ma aba, ma ya. We yada, we know you. Yah says, Yisra'ya has cast off the thing that is tough and the enemy shall pursue them you cannot cast off the beautiful things of yah you cannot cast the pearls of yah behind your back you cannot cast off the power of his testimony that's why we need the the taruach we need the sounding of the shofar we must sound the shofar it should be something done daily not just to ruach. It is a season and a time to remind us just like the Shabbat. We cease from all of our fleshly labor. We know that we can cease from that continuously. We can operate that way. Yisraya. We don't have to labor. We do not have to fashion. A self fashion our minds to pursue the things that are detrimental unto our own spiritual health. That we will trespass and overthrow the Torah of Yah. When one trespasses, one go beyond the statutes, the limitation, what is prescribed out of the uh, out of the, the the ability from the ability of one that has the power to to command and to instruct. So when you trespass, you say, I don't care what that says. Uh, it has no jurisdictions over me at all. Uh, and we cannot go beyond the jurisdiction of the Torah of Yah. And we trespass it doing things uh, that Yah said, you can't do that and say, you're my child. Uh, you can't do that and say, you love me. If I can't love Yisra'ya, I don't care for Yah. Does he love Yisra'ya? All right, if I don't love his people, his nation, I don't care for him. I'm going to finish this tonight. I know, just bear with me. It's going to take a little time, but it's of great substance, all right? Hallelujah. We must do that. That's why, as he began with Moshe, he says, I'm going to speak to you that the people may believe you 
forever. Did he not say that? He speaks to this messenger here. We own the theme to understand what the Teruach of Yah is. Yeskel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, 33, verse 1. <laughs> it says, again, the Torah, the Dabar, the Dabarim, the word of Yah came unto Yeskel, and this is what it, it uttered, it spoke unto him. He says, Benadum, he says, speak to the children of your people and say to them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their borders, one that has been born within their region of the same kinsman ship, he said, and set him as a safa, as a watchman, one that looks out, one that spies, one that keeps a watch as a watchman, and if he sees the sword coming uh, upon the land, uh, he blows uh, the shofar. That's what a watchman, Yoshua is uh, the watchman unto Yisrael. Yeah. And so he has shofars. He has shofars. That the messengers may sound the alarm and the Kodash mountain of Yah. He says here, if you see the sword come upon the land, he blows the shofar and he zaha, he warns, he admonishes, rebuke the people. Then whosoever hears the sound of the shofar and take not warning, if the sword comes and take him away, the blood shall not be upon the messenger, the safa, upon the watchman's head. He hears the sound of the shofar and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that takes warning shall deliver his nefesh. Now that is what Kempura is about. It is the time of Teruach. is the time to prepare us for Kippura. For the time to afflict ourselves. So if we do not hear the warning of the safa, the messenger... The one that warns as he blows the shofar, as he makes a loud voice, as we come to the season, that this is the time that warns us that Yah, he, he grants you this time to come before him. Every eight seconds someone dies. That is the mathematical formula for the known populace of the earth. And every six seconds someone is born. So there's one born faster, and there's more birth than death. And yet out of 6.6 .6 billion people, he has not called your number. We cannot continue to allow the, the infestation of corruption to infest us, Yisra'ya. We must hear the zakhir, the admonishment, the correction, the rebuke of Yah, Yisra'ya. He says in verse 6, But if the watchman see the sword come, blows not the shofar, and the people be not warned, if the sword comes and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his own, his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. His sins shall not be upon him, but that one who has not warned. That's why we must constantly sound the alarm. That's why we must blow the shofar in the mountain of Yah. That's why we must gather in the Mo'adim or the Mo'ad of Yah to warn that there will be a liberty and freedom to sing, to dance, to shout. Yeah. Yeah. And to rejoice in the abundance of Yah. Yeah. So you, been at home, I have set you a watchman to be at Yisra'ah. Therefore you shall hear the words of my mouth and warn them for me. That is what it's about, Yisrael. Yeah. Always about the warning. There is nowhere in Torah that when we hear the shofar, and there are quite a few scriptures, that when you hear the shofar, it's about warning, the judgment, the correction, what is upon us, the attentiveness of Yah. We must pay attention. Yisra'ya unto Yah. We must hear. I have a few more verses here. I, I want to bring out quickly 
this must be spoken. All right. Quickly turn to Yeremiah Jeremiah. As he speaks of Yah's justice and his correct fashion as how he does things, but before that, he always sends a warning. And he calls the Novi to utter with great clarity unto Yisrael. That is what the sure sound of the shofar is. That's what Teruach is. It is to prepare us, to make our minds and our hearts to be steadfast, established in the Torah of Yah. The Novi speaks, Yeremiah chapter 6, verse 15. Yah says, although we have sinned, look, look at what I have done up until this point. Look at my vile nature up until this point as we draw near to this day. Look at my sinful activities that I have performed. Yah says, were they bush? Were they ashamed? Are you a shame man? When you have committed such abomination unto Yah, are you a shame man? You declare this unto the people. You have committed such abomination to Eba. He says, Lord, they were not ashamed. They were not bush. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. Yah says, at the time I will visit them with punishment. They shall be cast down, says Yah. Listen, Yisrael. This says Yah. Stand. He tells us to stand in the way. Shaul says, after done all to stand, stand where? In the way. He says, stand. Stand still and see the Yoshua of Almighty Yah. He says, stand in the way and see and ask of the old has way. He said, where is the tough way? That's the tough way. He says, and halach, walk therein. He says, and when you walk in the way of Yah, he said, you shall find rest for your nefesh. But they said, we will not walk therein. We don't respond to Yah that way, do we? Yah says, also, Yeremiah, as he said to Yeskel, I said, you, or I said, watchmen over you, saying, listen, Shemach, listen to the sound of the Shufa. Does it say that? Listen for the sound of the day of Teruach, the warning, the alarm of the city. He tells us to Shemach, to listen for the sound of the shofar. But they said, we will not. We are not going to listen. We will not listen. I don't believe you have to keep those feast days. Yah says, Listen, Shemach, give attentiveness your ear to the sound, to the blast of the shofar and the reply. I will not listen at all. I will not keep the Mo'at. You don't have to keep it. You must be in Yerushalayim. It's not so, Yisrael. There are things that even though the bed of Yah is dissolved in the physical sense, but we are the bed of Yah. We are the building stones of that. And there are things that will perform the offerings, the zabach, and, the, and those things uh, in there. And yet they are performed through the power of the living Torah. Yeshua in us, Yisra'ya. So there are things that although we're not in Yerushalayim, we cannot do. But yet we do them in our dwelling, wherever we are. Throughout all of our generations. So we keep the more at the more dam of Yah. And He has given unto us the Chodesh, the moon, so that we will know. We must become even more cognizant and conscious of that. There is a matter that I must discuss with the Zakin, and we will discuss that with you all at a later date. All right? Hear this quickly, Yisrael. As Yah, He reproves His nation, His people. 
And he always do this. It, that is one thing that uh, this beautiful time that we're in to Ru'akha, his breath shall flow over us. We're going to dance, we're going to sing, dress ourselves up, and come into Yah's house, all right? I, I want to read this, and then I want to discuss Kempora before we close the night, all right? Again, you that are listening, we greet you all in Yahshua's mighty name. You that have come late, Ara'ak Davis there in California. He is so tentative, he always wants to hear. So I'm hoping that if not, I said to him, if we do not get this message up tonight, I said, Ara'ak Yabi, first thing on tomorrow, he will get it up for you. Look at this as you are the uh, uh, our, our uh, indecisiveness and our faithfulness of integrity, in essence, we're just flat-out hypocrites. He speaks to us in Yeshua, Isaiah. He commands the messenger. <clears throat> he says, first of all, Isaiah 51, he commands him to kara. I want you to cry out, to recite it. I want you to proclaim. He said, cry, as I often use this word, garon. Charon, it is when the throat is enlarged. When you got to unbutton your shirt because uh, your throat, you got to get some breath there. He says, I want you to garon. He said, crawl out. And he said, I want you to garon from your throat. I want it to burn like a fire from your bosom. He said, I want you to hashach. Spare not. He said, lift up your voice like a shofar. Like a shofar. Is this not a warning? Yes. So is the day of the uh, Ruach. He said, lift up your voice like a shofar and show my people their transgression and bid your uncle their sins. Who is he talking to? All of these tribes. Every last one of them. Yosef, Ruban, Shimihon, Levi. He's talking to all. He's talking to every last one of the house of Yisrael. Yeah. In this small gathering, there are those from different tribes. He's talking to all Yisrael. He says, uh, yet, verse 2, yet they seek me daily and they have faith and delight to know my ways as a nation that did Sadiq. And they forsook not the ordinance or the judgment of Yah. They ask of me ordinance of justice or Sadiq. And they... And they take delight in approaching Yah. So we must lift up our voices like a shofar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound of warning. And so we come to this most beautiful time of, uh, of Turu'ak that we will gather here because we will look for the new moon under Yom Rishon and then at the eve of Yom Shani, the first day, we will celebrate the second day, we will celebrate at the evening, uh, we'll celebrate this great gathering of Yah's people. There were two feast days that were there, a more of them that were there together that he instructed Yisrael that they must be mindful to guard and to honor. I want to deal with the day of atonement, of Yom Kippur, a Kippurim. I want to teach on that for a moment, all right? And the Kippurah or Kippurah is, you're sure it is this dumb that covers us and cleanse and purge. That is what atonement is, Yisraya. It is a process to cleanse and to purge, to bring reconciliation, to have a propitiation, a kafa, a kafa, a kafa. That's what it is to cover us, to purge. It is uh, to have uh, one to, uh, as he watches over us, uh, he's the one that pitches over us, Yisraya. Yeah. He spreads the wings of Yah's mercy and kindness over Yisraya. Yeah. He grants unto us a gathering of such. Uh, and so he says to us in this Kempur, uh, that as he was afflicted by man, that we should anna, that is uh, to afflict, to humble ourselves. To break ourselves down. It is nothing like when one's belly began to speak. The God of their belly. And the hunger and those kinds of pains. That we tend to think irrationally. Do we not? Some crazy things come to our mind after two or three days of fasting. 
That's a fact. Let me teach on this. Back to Weira. I stop at the 25th verse in Leviticus 23. I want to proceed to, to verse 26. Leviticus 23, 26. Again, yeah, he spoke at the bar. He commanded one. He spoke unto Moshe with a beautiful voice of his singing, his shirim, to Moshe saying, he said, also on the 10th day of the seventh month, which will bring us to the 27th of September, it, it shall be a Yom Kippur, a day of atonement. He tells us, I want you all to hear this now. He says, it shall be a Kodash Mikra. It's a time of reading, calling together, reading of the Torah. It shall be Kodash, set apart, like no other day. There is no other moat whereby the threats of Yah, Yah are so adamant and severe. We can play all we want to, but it's to our own demise. Listen to what he says now. He says, on that day, you shall, Anna, you shall deal harshly. I recall an individual was here some years ago at Tabernacle, and they used the word humble in a way that we have been taught that humble means that, uh, you know, you just cow down like a little puppy dog. I want to reflect the definition of the word ana from its Hebraic roots, some of the characteristics of it. It implies to chasten oneself, to deal harshly with, to submit self, to weaken self, to exercise, and to force. We don't force ourselves. We don't think that that's humble that you say the word humble or you say humble humble it is ana ana the same way so when i spoke to the individual the way you use that it is inappropriate so he reflected to me you're not humble that's why people that's why they don't like you but he was here that's why they talk against you i said who well i know and I knew who it was. Those weak preachers that do not and cannot stand strong truth. And so the next morning I said to him, I want to show you something. Come here. You're wrong. And so the one of them walked out. I don't want to look at it. So one said, as I showed the individual the definitive, showed them the etymology of the word, showed them all of that, he walks out. And one in his ignorance, he sat there and said, can't argue with that. It is the truth. You have brought this out. I, I didn't know that. I know. I know you didn't know it. That's why y'all brought you here to be quiet and learn something. That's what the word, Anna, he says you must afflict or humble your nefesh, the power of your life. Your appetite, your mind, your ruach, you must afflict that. What is the purpose of that? That, that our passion and desires uh, do not rise up or transpose or transpose the Torah of Yah, that we do not oppose the Torah of Yah. That we transcend the very nature of the Torah of Yah and we think we're above it. It can't be. So that is why he says, uh, as we hear the sound, uh, I give you 10 days that you, 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 you in your mind, you, you ponder, you see what he's brought you from. You see what Yah has done. He could have taken you in all of your harsh attitude, your spirit, your hatred, your defilement. So he brought you to this time to atone. And there's nothing that atones for a man like the dumb Yoshua HaMashiach. When you got the power of that testimony of Yoshua and you, you obey Yah, you love to hear his voice. You love the true messengers of Yah. And you want to walk right Yisraya. You're not in this for some kind of religious facade. Or some kind of religious emotion. Or some kind of feel nice thing. I'm not here for that. You want to find that. You better go find someone else. But if you think you're going to get that from me. You're absolutely wrong. 
That's not coming from me. I know this is real. And I know I have not given a... He asked for all. He doesn't ask for partial. And I've given him up. And don't tell me you have. I will mind. I want to teach, all right. So don't go that way with me. Hallelujah. He said, we shall afflict our nefesh. And he said, I want you to offer an offering made by fire to Yah. I want you to pour out from the richness of that word of fire in your bone. And offer unto Yah a todah that is beyond your ability to comprehend or to express. Not like some morbid thing. You allow your flesh, you will not rise up against me. You will not detain me. You will not destroy this great fervor in me. I will afflict you. I will denounce you. You're going to submit to the fire of this uh, truth of Yah's word in me. That's what it's about. He gives us seasons and times to practice that, Yisra'ya, to asa, to fashion our minds. And this is what he says in verse 28. You shall do le, no work, abuda, no work in that same day. For it is yam kimpor, yam kimpor. It is the day of atonement. And he says, and it is to make a kafa, a reconciliation. A cleansing. It is a day to make an atonement for you before Yah, your Abba. And the strict warnings of Yah in verse 29 for if any nephesh, any living being, that shall not be afflicted in the same day, he uses the word kara. He shall be cut off, he shall be eliminated, he shall be destroyed. He shall perish. He shall be brought down to the earth. This is what Yon says. If any man shall not be afflicted in the same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever, whomsoever is the one of the nephesh, it is that does any melcha, any work at all, any kind of occupational uh, responsibility, whether it's religious or political, that's what melcha is. When I saw that, uh, I said, all right. And it, it actually says any kind of religious or any kind of political worker. You don't promote anything. Whosoever do any kind of work in that day, in the same day, in that same day, the same nefesh, Yah says, will I. Oh God, I will eliminate, I will destroy, I will bring down to the dust of the earth. And we don't think we die, but we die spiritually. There's no love, no will for the Torah of Yah. He kills us. Those that eat and take of this table unworthy, that's why many are dead. That's why there's no spiritual life. That's why we don't get excited about Yah. That's why we never progress, we never grow. We never mature from the state of mind. Our minds are so corrupt. Come on. You're going to die and go to hell. I'm just telling you that. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. There's nowhere in the book whereby Yah has, uh, has, has uttered a statement with such profound warnings uh, that he threatens us. Yeah. And so we go to fast. It's a day of fasting. How do I know it's a yeah. day of fasting? I will show you that, all right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. L let me give you, let me show you that. It says here in the book of Yeremiah. Yeremiah. As Baruch, as the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 36, verse 5. I know it's a day of fasting because, as I say to you all the time, I'm a man that researches words. And I find words and I research the words. This is how I know it's fasting. Bear with me. We greet you all again that have joined us. And we will get this teaching back up online for you. We're not worrying about refining it deleting we just want to crunch it and get it right back up all right for those that are in the waiting and need to understand the value 
and the importance of the feast days of Yah. As I said, we have this booklet, Yahweh's Covenant Feast Days, and the importance of Yah's feast days. You can download them, you can write, we will send them to you free of charge. We charge for nothing. We put everything up because we're small and we don't have funds, and we do it so you can take it all. You don't have to write us if you take music, you can take it. We own no words, we patent nothing. We own no rights to nothing. We have been bought. And so our rights are in Him. We have not patented one word, one song. Uh, yes, there's nothing new under the, under the heavens. How do you know, how do we know we can concur that it's a time of fasting? It says in the book of Yeremiah, Jeremiah 36 verse 5. And Yeremiah, he commanded Baruch, saying, I am, I, I can't even talk. I'm shut up. I'm closed up. I cannot go into the bed of Yah. I cannot even go into the house. He said, therefore, go. I want you to go and I want you to read from the scroll which you have written from my mouth. The word of Yah in the ears of the people in Yah's bed. He says, upon the sum or the fasting day. That day is the day of Yam. Kippur. He said, I want you to read this on the day of fasting. We're blessed that Yah even as even as the ark labored that he grants us a season to study things to make them more uh, knowledgeable to us Yisrael. It's a blessing and we need to learn how to appreciate that. We really do. He said, on that day of fasting, and you shall also read in their ears uh, and all of Yahudah that come out of the city. It may be that they will present their supplication before Yah and will return everyone from his evil way. That's what this day of Kippurah is about. It's a day of reflecting yourself that you'll return from your evil ways. You will not allow your flesh to guide you. He said that day of fasting, of Sum, it is Yom Kippur. That's the day of fasting. It's the day of afflicting yourself. He said, for, for great is the anger and the fury of the Chami, uh, the Chama, that Yah has pronounced against his people. You know that he's going to kill us, so he's going to destroy his, this, he has destroyed the people before. So he gives, grants us on this great day of fasting, this great day of affliction. That we will return from our evil. That our flesh, we say, well, I got you under control. You're not going to make me do it. Uh, you're not going to make me break what Yah says. Yah says that he will kill me. I'm not going to eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Uh, got you on that one. No, just peanut butter. He doesn't eat jelly with it. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to have me a, 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 a powder drink. No. Hallelujah. He said, for great is the anger of Yah that Yah has pronounced against his people. And Baruch, the son of Niriah, did according all that Yeremiah the Nobi commanded. He said, why he commanded him. Reading in the book, the Sefa of the word of Yah, in Yah's Bayat. Yeah. Dawid speaks of the same day or the purpose of this affliction. Psalms 35, 13. He says, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. He says, and then I humbled. Does he not say humble here? It is the same words, Anna. I afflicted, I bowed down. I humbled my nephesh with what? Fasting. So we know that this is how we humble ourselves. And that's how we afflicted ourselves. He said, I humble myself, and Anna is to afflict, isn't it? Yes. So you humble yourself with fasting, and my prayer return into my own bosom. I want to give us a word of consolation in all of this, you that have joined us. It comes out of the mouth of the Nobi Yachahanan, Yoshua, as he speaks unto us. First John, as the Nobi speaks, First Yachahan, 
chapter 2, verse 1. This is our assurance as we celebrate the modem of Yah. He says, my little children, we are the taff of Yah. He said, these things I write to you that you sin not. Don't, Yisraeliah. We cannot operate in this carnal nature. First John chapter 2, verse 1. He said, if any of us sin, we have an advocate with the Abba, Yoshua HaMashiach, HaSadiq. He is the righteous one of Yah. And this is the catalyst for our assurance. And he is the propitiation or the kafa. See, the word propitiation, the atonement, the price paid. He is the propitiation. He has made the atonement and the reconciliation for Yisrael. Yeah. He, is, uh, uh, he is the propitiation for our sins. And not only our sins, but also the sins of the whole world. He is the kafa. He is the one that redeemed. He is the atonement for all of our sins, Yisra'ya, Yeshua HaMashiach. Who is he? He is the power of Yah's life in this living book. He is the power of Yah's breath. He is the living Torah of Yah. And one of the wisest one that ever walked the earth, he gives us great assurance here. In Mishli, as I close here, Proverbs chapter 16 by verse 6. Proverbs 16, 6. You need to hear this. It says, by hasad, by the faithful kindness, the mercies, tenderness of Yah, by mercy and Torah, truth, iniquity is uh, kafa, is purged. See, that's the only way whereby the atonement is made and it gives us security. Yeah. Proverbs 16, verse 6, Mishli, by mercy hasad, and imats ovon is it is kafa, the atonement, the reconciliation by mercy and truth. Are we reconciled to Yah? It's by His hasad, His tender kindness, and by the truth of the Torah are we kafa, we reconcile unto Yah, and by the fear of Yah we as men we depart from ra, from all evil. That's how we do it. Again, I want to say to you that have joined us, we here in Teshua, we will gather here on Monday evening at sundown, September the 17th, for, for Yom, the feast, the Moed of Yom to Ruach. And also we will gather here uh, from, uh, on the 17th at sundown uh, for great fellowship and singing and dancing I wanted to combine these two teachings together because uh, we're not going to gather on next week. Hallelujah. And then for atonement on Tishri, the 10th, which will be September the 27th, that will be Thursday. And the service will begin on Wednesday evening like this. Until Thursday evening, we will keep the atonement of Yah. All right. May the riches of your rest upon you all. Again, these booklets are free for anyone that wants them. We will send them to you all. And we appreciate all your kindness. You that have sent your offerings to the Yah for your great kindness. She's very kind in her gifts uh, uh, for the labor, the ministry as well. And all you are a host, uh, and our host Felicia there in Baltimore. May the riches of your rest upon you. There are those, I, I don't want you to think that I forget you. We appreciate all you do. I don't, but I just, I'm the type that when I come in here, I'm ready to lay the hammer down. And that's just it. Hallelujah. And so when you start work, you've got to put the hammer. You, you, I, I'm this way. When I'm ready to work, I'm ready to work. I don't like nothing to stop. When I start rolling, I'm rolling. I let nothing stop me once I start rolling, and that's just the truth. And so I wanted to combine these two teachings. I wanted to wait till next week and teach on on Yom Kippur, but uh, we're not going to meet after uh, Monday evening, and so I did not want to do that on the Shabbat because I want to bring some some, uh, some tremendous wisdom of understanding to this teaching concerning the beast and the one that rises and say the river, this river is my own. Uh, as I said, when I look at things, I always see how shallow I am. That's me. You may, you know, I see how shallow I am. 
I see my inabilities and how insufficient I am. I have no strengths of my own. I do not. It is only the strength of Yah, he that is weak. Let the weak, as that we say, say you're strong. And I know I'm weak. You may be strong, all right? I don't mind being weak. Because I, it shows me I have no confidence in me. I have confidence in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ever felt like you were going to die or something like that? All right. I know that my life is going to cease one day. Yours too. That's a fact. So we must get right with you. How do we do that? By asking of the old path. Getting back to the old way. And doing what is right. And not being phony. It's one thing I will say to you all. It's one thing my natural brother taught me. I didn't. My oldest brother is 65, 66 years old. And I had great regard for him because the man was one of the most. I have never sat down at a man's feet. Evangelist Hartsfield was an excellent teacher, but this man could bring our things in a way, I'm telling you. And he didn't have all of the, of the tools that I have today. Computers and dictionaries like he could open that book and bring things out in a way that it was astonishing. I will never forget that when we met Evangelist Hartsfield, he said, I've traveled all over. He said, Brother Roberts, that's what he called him, Brother Joe. His name was Joel. That's where my, uh, my Ima named all of them. She named uh, him Yuel. She named uh, one Yaakov, one Yachahan, and me, Dawid. And the last one, she named him Daryl. But she took all of our names out of the Torah, out of the book, out of the Novi. But he was a man that was very... He was like this. He, was a, he would say to me, he'd say, baby boy. He would call me baby boy. Of course, I can eat off his head. You understand? He would say, baby boy, I'm the jack of all trade and the master. Man. There was nothing the man could not do. Nothing. He was doing things. Man, he was... He was turning in the days, old telephones, and they, he was turning them in the radios and everything. That's the way he was. He, he, he was just a phenomenal individual. And we would go to his home and sit on his feet. I would beg him to teach me, please. I would see the man getting off the bus, walking home. I would give him 10, 15 minutes to get home, maybe eat, and let's go. And I would just sit there like a little child. Just, just open the book. Come on, man. Just open that book for me. He said, baby boy, I'm tired. I worked all day. I said, I know that. Just, I said, I know that. Just sit right there and just, I would just sit there and just look at him. I would just look at him and just, and he was like, man, he said, okay, man, I don't know I would get rid of you. Just, just, that's it. Just open that for a little bit. Half an hour, okay, that's fine. We go home, mommy and I. And he would, he, 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 he would always say this to me. These are his words. He would say, baby boy. Don't be a pancake. Don't be real. Anything you do. Don't be a phony, baby boy. And I, I, come on, man. I, I allowed that. Come on, Yisrael. I, I will not. I've never allowed that. I worked for him. He worked me like a dog. I didn't raise my voice at him. I didn't show man. I'm a man. I never did that. Because my love for him was greater than that. And I honored him. Even though he dishonored me today, I honored the man. Because I know I learned much from him. He taught me things. He showed me things uh, in that book. He showed me things that, that I didn't hear no other preacher. I remember Evan Hartford when he met him. He said, you know, I've traveled all over the United States. He said, I've traveled. I've preached all kinds of places. He said, but I've never met a man that had the true calling and the gift. And the true calling of a more a teacher of your and that is gifted. He said, you are one. I've never met one that could extrapolate from this book. And Evangel Horn, Hartsfield, he was no slouch, believe me. And my, my oldest brother was no slouch out there. He was no slouch. The man was no slouch. And I always thought about he and I just working together. Man, what a great blessing. He, can build, he could build anything. He could do anything, man. That's the kind of man he was. And now his life is pined away. 
true. But I will not throw away what he taught me. It was excellent. May Yah bless you all. May enrich you all. Again to you, Yisrael. May the strength of Yah rest upon you all. May he grant you his shalom, this beautiful Yom. Let us stand to our feet. We will turn toward Yerushalayim on this beautiful day, this gathering of Chasve Imats. In all things we do, berach you our Abba for your great blessings. We pray for all Yisrael, those that or in need of your great strength, watch over them, heal our bodies. We need your healing, Yah. Touch us all that we may be strong in Imuna. And keep us all, Yah, as we walk on the way, in the way, on the old path. We pray for the Shalom of Jerusalem, your people, Yisra, Yah, scattered abroad. We bind every demon, every spirit of hell. We brush, we barak you for all things. Keep us this night and watch over us all. Your sure's mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Yabra Kistra.